Welcome to our podcast, Inspiring Living, with me, Mark Candelaria. I am an architect, blogger, traveler, chef, father, and husband. I am the founder and a partner of a fabulous 20-person architecture firm specializing in high-end residential architecture, designing amazing homes across the country and now the world. We have hosted tours over the last 22 years to Italy, Spain, Oregon, and soon France. And in the course of all this, I have met a lot of interesting people who truly inspire me. We are excited to now be in our third season, and our podcast is all about the opportunities that are right there in front of us to inspire living. Yes, we will talk about architecture and design, but every week we will venture into all sorts of topics that will inspire you, teach you, and motivate you to inspire living every day. My guests will include a wide gamut of amazing people from those in the design industry to clients to real estate professionals, chefs, artists, sports figures, and philanthropists, and people who just flat out get it. Sit back and enjoy, and let's have some fun exploring all the opportunities that are there just waiting for us. Please subscribe and get ready to be inspired with every podcast. Okay, as my dad says, here we go. Welcome, everyone, to another episode of Inspiring Living. I hope everyone is enjoying this stellar weather. Can't say it's spring yet, as that's still a week away, but boy, am I enjoying every one of these gorgeous days, as we all know those 100-degree days are just right around the corner. I hope you have all enjoyed our six episodes of Extravagant Spaces on the Design Network and now on DirecTV. The link to all the episodes is provided in our story notes. You can do some binge watching now. I have two wonderful guests today, CEO and President of the Central Arizona Chapter of Habitat for Humanity, Mr. Jason Barlow, and my good friend from many years, Rosie Romero of KTAR Radio, Rosie on the House. Both of these gentlemen are truly inspiring to me and so many others and have made such a huge impact in our community. And I'm honored to have them on my podcast today as we invite all of you to join us at our Habitat for Humanity Gala Blueprints and Blue Jeans set for next Saturday, March 23rd at the Omni Hotel, Mona Lucia. We still have some openings for the gala, so please come join us, have some fun, and help all of us make a difference in our community. There is not a better charity and not a better well-run charity than Habitat for Humanity, and I am so proud to be a board member of this game-changing organization, so I encourage you to join us. Links to the event are in the story notes. Okay, a couple quick announcements. We have sold out our Oaxaca, Mexico tour set for May 2nd through the 8th. We are so excited, and our pre-trip happy hour for our travelers is set for next Friday. Make sure you follow us on social media as this is going to be an amazing tour co-hosted with our good friend, Artisan Alfonso Verdusco. Tiffany and I and Alfonso and I met yesterday, went through every detail, and I tell you, this is going to be an amazing, amazing journey. So we're really, really excited. We would also like to announce our Oregon Willamette Valley Wine and Food Tour is set for August 7th through the 12th. We moved it up a couple days just so we could reserve the entire setting in near Dundee, Oregon for our group. It'll just be us there. This will be our third Willamette tour, and we are stoked to be escaping the Arizona summer for the vineyards of Central Arizona. This is a five-day tour, and you will not want to miss it. Links to the tour are, again, in our story notes. Our September Italy tour is sold out, so no openings left there, as this will be our 25th tour over the last 24 years. Hard to believe, but I never get tired of taking my travelers to Italy, so here we go. Finally, I want to thank all of those who came as my guest to Marcelino's in Old Town Scottsdale last Tuesday night, where I was the guest chef for the evening. What fun that was. So again, thanks, Marcelino, for a fun event and allowing me to be your sous chef. So much fun. Okay, let's get to today's podcast. And so without further ado, let's welcome Jason Barlow and Rosie Romero. I have two guests with me today, two gentlemen who definitely inspire me. One of my guests has been a good friend and someone I have had the pleasure of working with on a number of projects over the last 40 years. And the other is someone who leads our local chapter of Habitat for Humanity, where I have been a board member now for a number of years. Both of these gentlemen know each other and have collaborated on several projects, and they both have some exciting things in the works. And so I just cannot wait to get into this podcast. Our guest today is first... Rosie Romero from KTAR's Rosie on the House. And my other guest is Jason Barlow, CEO and president of the Central Arizona Chapter of Habitat for Humanity. Welcome to you both. 
Hi, Mark. Thank you. And hi, Rosie. Good day, Mark. Good day, Mr. Jason. It's it's a beautiful day, isn't it? I mean, what are we doing on a podcast? We should all be on a golf course today, right? With the with the storm blowing right now, I think we should be back in our bags for Tahoe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, Jason, I understand you are going to a conference. You just brought up the uh, in Atlanta. Is that correct? That's right. Next week we have the global conference. It's every other year for Habitat for Humanity. It brings in oh, I don't know, six hundred people, uh, some worldwide Habitat affiliates, and pretty much a lot of them, maybe five hundred of them across the country. That's awesome. So this is an annual event? It's every other year. And the, and the off years, they have an executive director retreat. And we've actually held this, held the retreat here in Phoenix before. In fact, the first uh, couple of weeks I was on the job with Habitat, I ended up welcoming all these people from all over the country to Arizona. Wow. We ended up in Carefree. And it was, uh, I got to tell all my hot jokes, you know, because <laughs> uh, everybody expects it to be hot. So yeah, it was beautiful. That's awesome. Yes. So, and then Rosie, you just finished your show this morning on KTR, which of course I listened to and have been since you started your show in 1988. One of my favorite shows. I always <laughs> learn. I always learn something from your show. It's just, I, I just think it's so well done, and you've done it for so long, and I just commend you for for the great job you've done. Well, thanks for the kind words, Mark. There's hardly a Saturday that goes by I don't learn something <laughs> because. Uh, when you're on here talking about home improvement, whether it's concrete, cabinets, countertops, electrical, plumbing, air conditioning, drywall, insulation, roofing, you're always second guessed by that expert who calls me on Monday morning. Oh, Rosie, you were so off on that one. <laughs> well, good. I'm glad you feel that way because I feel that way every time I go to a job site. I go, gosh. <laughs> I've been doing this for 40 years and I feel like an idiot. I feel like I still don't know everything. I mean, it's just always so much to learn, isn't there? I mean, and I learn that every week, but after a week in Las Vegas for the uh, International Builder Show, you know, it was the International Builder Show, and we've been attending it every year for almost 40 years. Wow. And it was the Builder Show in 1987 in Atlanta, Georgia, where I ran into two guys, Mark, that challenged me to extend my stay and come to a radio show with them called the Rob and Bob show on one of the largest radio stations in America out of Atlanta. So I went and joined them, did the show and they just double dared me. Now go home and start your own show. So that's, that's, that's how, that's how it started. House got born. That's a, that's a good story. I didn't know that. I always wondered how you started that. Cause I know at the, about the time we were doing a couple projects together. Yeah, it was. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Just to go back a little further, the the way I actually met you and your whole family was through George Christensen, Man. and George Christensen, who was my mentor and former partner, and my first job in an architect's office back in 1982. Um, he turned me on to your dad, who was, who ended up being my allergy doctor. Allergist, yeah. <laughs> and so, you know, it was my dad and George Christensen that got me into construction, because yeah. my dad said, "Well, you'll never be a doctor." Uh, <laughs> Because you're not in class enough, yeah. and you faint every time you see blood. Yeah, and then George said, "Rosie, you really should go to engineering school because <laughs> you can't design your way out of a paper bag." <laughs> so I went to engineering school, and no one's been able to design anything I can't build yet. But I really like the building in. Yeah, no, great story, and I didn't know <laughs> that whole connection. And I know your brother; he's been on my uh, Italy yeah. tour. Yeah, and uh, we're good friends. We're both Scottsdale Charros, and and so I've always had this great connection with you and your family, and I I just think the world of all of you. So, well, and the feeling is mutual, Mister Candelaria. Yeah, no, it's awesome. So I also understand you have a real love for Habitat, and have sponsored past projects, and are involved in a new project with Habitat now. So let's talk about that a little bit, you guys. Rosie, I'll let you start first. Let's talk about the Rosie Habitat Build Challenge. What's that all about? You know, over the years that we've been doing the radio show, I've always told listeners, look, would you just participate with me in this one thing? If I've ever saved you a little money by teaching you how to do it yourself or saved you a little trouble or got you the right contractor or saved you from a crooked contractor, just take, just take 10% of what we saved you and contribute that to your favorite charity. 
And I'm going to pivot on that this year. I'm going to say, if I've ever saved you anything, let's come together as a team, focus our resources, and let's redirect, and let's do a rosy build, as we've done in the past, with Habitat for Humanity. That's awesome. Yeah, so I understand you have done a rosy build with Habitat before, correct? We have we have co-built with a couple people, Wells Fargo, we co-built one with, and I'm not going to remember the other one. It's It's been... 26 years ago. Gosh, that's amazing. That's awesome. Yeah, well, and I was I was on Rosie's show a couple weeks ago when he surprised the heck out of us by just announcing this on the air. We had no idea he was going to put this challenge out there, and we were blown away by his generosity, and his donors have been listening. Uh, we got quite a bit of money in there already uh, for the home, and uh, he continues on his website. He continues to mention on the air and uh you know really it only takes it only takes 143 people doing the tax the Arizona tax credit at the family level to pay for one habitat home that so incredible. that's that's what we're that's what what he's going for in his challenge we're super excited to partner with him to get this done yeah well this podcast is all about helping get that word out for sure so yeah if anyone can get stuff done it's it's rosy that's for sure <laughs> I, mr barlow <laughs> Yeah, well, both of you. That's what, I, that's what I said. I had two gentlemen who inspire me. You definitely fall into that category. And I'll just let everybody know I did a great podcast. I've done a couple podcasts with Jason in the past, one about his career and life. And then we did one on on a job site one time with the uh, homeowners. And that was a lot of fun. I need to do one with the 3D people and that house. You had yeah. a few things to say about the 3D house, Jason. Tell us about that a little bit. Well, uh, in April, a couple months from now, well, like next month, the family will have been in their 3D printed home for two years. Yeah, that's amazing. And I just that's yesterday, awesome. yeah, and that, isn't that crazy? Yesterday, I, I got an email from the the, uh, the the mom who's in there, and she says she just absolutely loves the house. <laughs> and it's so energy efficient. And Mark, everybody should know, Mark designed it for us. He took a he took a 1500 square foot habitat floor plan and just, you know, candelariaized it. And it just is gorgeous. And uh, it made, it made international news when we were the very first contract, we were the very first person to print a concrete printed home in Arizona. Yeah. And, uh, and since then it just has exploded. We've got neighborhoods going in all over and, and the technology has really improved. Rosie was there with with Romy. They did a tour of it. Maybe it was three quarters of the way done. Remember that, yeah, Rosie? I do, absolutely. <laughs> and we were walking through it, and I think they were scratching their heads a little bit about it, you know. <laughs> but uh, yeah. it's we haven't done another one yet. We've got some on the on the as you as you know, Mark. We've got we want to put the next project is put ten of them together, two story attached. And just let the printer go down the street and just knock right. them out and it's see how that works. So. We learned we learned so much doing that project. It was so cool. And I tell you, the family that lives in that house, I, I had the pleasure of cooking for them. You know, I've got that little clause in my contract that says that every house that I finish, <laughs> I, I get to come cook in your kitchen. And they took me up on it, which was great. And they had grandma there. They had all their cousins there. I mean, it was quite the... Quite the evening, but man, what a what a wonderful family they are. Yeah, and the Marcus and Sean, they're great, and they're great partners. They've probably given a hundred interviews uh, all over for that home, and we still, believe it or not, are giving interviews about printing doing that home. That's cool. Uh, we just gave one last week again, and uh, we figure we got four million hits on our website and our social media pages on based upon that one event. So. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I gave an interview to the, the director of housing in Paraguay, and there was an article, full-blown article in the South Korean Times. <laughs> I couldn't understand any of it, but I could see the pictures. And every now and then it said something about Central Arizona. So it it was really kind of a shot heard around the world, I think. Well, that's cool. I didn't even know about all that. That's, that's very neat. Pretty amazing. So, so, Rosie, back to you. You just came from that conference, and in uh, my questionnaire to you this morning, you mentioned you, you really saw a lot of cool things. I had two people there at the uh, Builder Show, and I haven't heard back from them yet. Hopefully they hopefully they got out of Vegas in one piece. Uh, but why don't you tell us some of the discoveries and, and new industry trends, housing trends? You saw some pretty amazing stuff from what I understand. We did, Mark. And uh, like I say, it's been a tradition that we go to 
Uh, there was a little while we'd go every other year. Yeah. Uh, but now the pace of change is so fast. If you're not there every year, you're missing some. Uh -huh. So we, we took six people and we break it up. You take countertops, you take appliances, you take oh, kids. And uh, then we can come together and, uh, and compare notes. And that's the only way you can cover 1 million square feet, wow. 1,800 exhibitors, 80,000 attendees. And uh, by the end of the second day, my wife and I were at 32,000 steps. And we had another, <laughs> we had a, we had another day to go. Oh wow. my God. Yeah. I've been, to, I've been to it a couple of times. It's kind of mind blowing how big it is. It is. And you know, I love to cook too. And I, Mark, I'm forever being pulled out of the appliances because I always want to see what I want that barbecue that can throw the BTUs of a NASA orbit launching <laughs> rocket. But then I want, but then I want to be able to simmer my hollandaise sauce at whole to hold it for temperature. There you go. So, I'm constantly looking at the barbecues and the cooktops and the appliances, but there were three products down there this year that had direct Phoenix and Arizona roots. One of them won best of show oh, out, wow. of, out of 1800 exhibitors, a firm right here, officing on Thomas road called free power. One best of show really a cool invention that will let you turn any surface top into a charging station for your phones, your laptops. What? And it's it's so cool. You're gonna have to start building this into every single home. Oh gosh. So no more cords, no more of these no, cords. No more cords. No. Oh God. Now that's called cutting the cord. Oh yes. Yeah. <laughs> so remember it. Free power. It's free gonna power. I'm writing that one down. Maybe, maybe awesome. they'll donate a couple of them to a habitat home. Maybe they'll go. put one yeah. in the Rosie build house that we do uh on the kitchen counter or side for the habitat family. That'd be cool. Well, Mark, you know in programming with homes and homeowners, you're always asking them, where's your drop zone? Right. When you oh. come in, where'd you come in? Where are you dropping everything? Yep. Where's your briefcase? Where's your wallet? Well, now he can make you move your drop zone to wherever your wife wants it. That's cool. That's she wants awesome. it. She wants it around the corner, not on the kitchen island. Yep. That's where you put your free power charger and you leave everything there charges up. That's amazing. Wow, that's very cool. So that's, that's what else did you see? What, what trends did you go into the conferences or speaking engagement? Ooh, man, I got something I've got to get Mr. Barlow into. It's called built another Arizona connected software product. B I L T Jason. This is the, uh, Apple goggles that you put on. And I think he has 600 manufacturers, assembly and maintenance manuals pre-programmed into this thing. Whoa. Mark, if you can picture this, you put the goggles on, you send an apprentice out to service a three ton train heat pump. He can bring up the entire manufacturer specifications in the top of the screen. It'll show them the next step for checking these particular gauges. And the bottom of the screen is see-through to his hands on what he's working on. That's amazing. Oh my word, that sounds amazing. This is, I, I, I walked by and the guy jumped out and grabbed me in the aisle. He says, Rosie, you have to see this. I didn't know what it was. <laughs> no one in my office would ever send me to research the software development. <laughs> yeah. But I was in that booth for two hours. Wow. That's I mean, you could, the, he was at Nellis Air Force Base the day before demonstrating how the mechanics on the F-35s are going to use this, training 19 and 20 year olds how to work on $200 million airplanes. Wow. Makes sense. I mean, that just, that's amazing. That's so cool. It, uh, it, it was so cool. Yeah. We have, all of our Habitat homeowners have to go through some of these home maintenance classes because they don't know how to change an air conditioning filter. They've never owned their own home. And so this, those goggles could be a game changer oh. 
for each family, put them on, show them, walk them. How do you, how do you unclog a drain? Where's the, you know, what do the circuit breakers do? Wow. That's, I wrote it down. That's a great idea. Yeah, that's, that's very cool. I always tell people the reason I don't help out on the job sites too much, because the only power tool I know how to use is a cell phone. <laughs> I said, otherwise I'd be dangerous out there. But with these goggles, I might be able to help you out, Jason. Yeah. Oh, that'd be great. Other than just drawing, I could actually maybe swing a hammer or something. <laughs> so what else? What's the, what are some of the trends you heard out there in housing? I mean, it's just booming out here in Arizona, as you know. Well, um, I, I'll tell you the one trend I heard over and over and over again is better, not bigger. Hmm. That's good. I preach I it, all the time. I heard it over and over and over again. So I think there's a lot to be said for that. Yeah, I, I totally agree. I mean, I look at some of these houses and thank God I get to do these big giant houses, but I could, <laughs> I could never live in one of them. I tell people the same thing. I said, do yeah. it smaller and just do it nicer, you know? And people, they look at me like I'm kind of crazy. And then I, but I'm getting a lot of people that are downsizing. I did their house, you know, 40 years ago. Yeah. You know, downsize, but they want all the bells and whistles that they had in their 12, 15,000 square foot house. And I said, yeah, we can, we can, you basically live in one room, which I'm sitting in right now, the kitchen. I know it doesn't look like it on the screen, but I mean, everyone lives in their kitchen. I call it the living room. We just happen to cook and eat in. That's right. And, you know, I just think if people just learn how to downsize and just do it really nice versus all big and vanilla, they'll be much happier. You know, it's less upkeep, less property taxes, less air conditioning. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. Right, Rosie? Oh, it's it's so much better for everybody and everything. Yeah, and, sure. And when you start and talking about the improvements, you know, going to a home show 40 years ago, there'd be eight shower heads on display for a national home show. <laughs> I can't tell you how many hundreds of shower heads were on display. And I mean, you can, you can have eight shower heads in one shower, yeah. heated, heated floor, circulating steam, you know, uh, it's supply side economics. We keep creating newer and newer things and there's nothing wrong with that, but take an assessment of what you really want, build it into something that doesn't I mean, you really can't warm a 200 square foot master primary shower. Right. Bring it in, bring it into 80 square feet. Right. Make it comfortable and, you know, it'll warm up before you're, before you're soaked up. That's right. I totally agree with you. So Jason, let's seeing, talk. go ahead. Pursuing, Jason. Sorry, Mark, we're pursuing that same trend at Habitat. Uh, better, not bigger. Uh, in fact, we're scaling down and we've act actually asked Mark and he's helping us design a smaller footprint home, which will have all the stuff in it that our current homes have, but we'll be able to make it more compact, meaning we'll be able to get more density on lots and, and parcels of land because the affordable housing crisis isn't going to go away anytime soon. No, it's, it's, it's really, I mean, I look at it with my kids and, you know, I mean, starter homes are what 300,000 now or I mean, 400,000. I mean, more that's than that, yeah. crazy, you know? And, and so, yeah, I'm really excited about what we got going. I can't really wait to show you what, what we've got on the boards, Jason. It's pretty cool stuff. Right. Uh, but yeah, I think that's, I mean, we're basically Europeanizing ourselves in terms of, you know, mom and dad moving in, the kids moving in. It's happening. It's starting to happen in this country. And we're all going to have to live quite a bit differently to accommodate that is what I'm seeing. And I mean, I can't believe how many guest houses we're doing, whether they're detached oh. or attached. It's left and right. I mean, we got a whole squad that are doing nothing but guest houses, you know? Oh, I mean, the city council sure opened that door wide open, didn't it? Oh, it was smart to do, I think. Oh, well, and the utility companies and the building departments, their hair's on fire. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. But, it, but it was the right thing to do. Yeah. No, it's helping a lot. And I think that yeah, uh, makes a lot of sense to, for a habitat homeowner to have an accessory dwelling unit, an ADU in the backyard to either rent out, have grandma, because most of their families have all kinds of relatives yep. living with them or are going to join them, et cetera. So it makes a lot of sense. Yeah. So that's something I'll have to adapt to what we're doing now that you mentioned that. I like that idea. So Jason, let's talk about some of the amazing things we have going on in Habitat. First thing I want to make sure I get in, we'll talk about it right now. We can talk about it at the end is March 23rd. We've got Blueprints and blue jeans. Tell me what the heck is blueprints and blue jeans. Okay. I know what it is, but tell our listeners. 
Well, that's our annual friend raiser, I call it. And it's a, it's a fun event, fun evening. We're having it at the Montalucia in Scottsdale. Uh, tickets are still available. And uh, we just invite everybody. It's Blue Jeans. Uh, Rosie's going to sit at my table, as a matter of fact, and his lovely wife. It's going to be a fun night. And, you know, we have, it's a standard nonprofit kind of a fundraiser that's more scaled back and laid, laid back. Uh, we don't, we're not in tuxedos and all that stuff. We just have a good old time. There's a lot of cool auction items. I mean, I just flew with the Maricopa County Sheriff's helicopter group just last week. And I, I got it in auction at last year's Habitat Blueprints of Blue Jeans. They're just tremendous auction items to get out there and really help help our mission and, uh, you know, help Arizona, you know, give us a hand up. And that's kind of why we do it. Excellent. Yeah, we'll have the link on our story notes. And so, yeah, for all my listeners out there, please uh, support this group. Um, everything that Habitat does, and Rosie, you mentioned this in your, your comments back to me. And the reason I really have been impressed by being a part of, of Habitat is I see the efficiency uh -huh. of how they use their money. There's not all these tuxedo galas with ice sculptures that are $20,000 and, you know, give me a break. I mean, come on, get the money to the people that need it. And that's what I love about being a part of Habitat is I, I see how you do that, Jason. And it's, it's amazing. Well, thank you. We used to have a calculation that, that said something like for every dollar that you donated to Habitat, we could turn it into like $2. And the reason for that is, is uh, because think of the volunteers, like last year we had over 10,000 volunteers work with us. We have all these in-kind donations. We have all of these different things going on that allow us to really magnify the uh, the donation that, that is given to Habitat. And we're, you know, we try to be good stewards of everybody's money because, uh, uh, it's important to demonstrate that. And that's why we have all the pedigree labels and the, you know, Better Business Bureau and the gold charities, and all that stuff that we that we have, because people want to know that their money is going to be well spent. Yeah, that's for sure. So tell us about how, how does the Arizona tax credit benefit Habitat for Humanity? Talk about that a little bit. Oh, well, this is this is the vehicle that Rosie's got in his challenge. And uh, th this is an absolute no brainer. It, you can give, if you're single, you can give 441. It went up from 400 and it's gonna go up again next year. If you're a married couple, you can give 841 and it comes right off your taxes that you owe Arizona. Right. So it's like just diverting that money that you give to the state, just give it to a charity that you know and love. And hopefully that's Habitat and they're somewhere. And, and if you mention Rosie Build or Rosie Challenge on the memo section, we're putting it right in his in his build pot. And when we reach the magic number, which is 120,000 now for a, a full home sponsorship, can you imagine 120,000 builds one habit? That's the sticks and bricks cost yeah. of a Habitat home because of all the other stuff we've got coming in. Now that is that rises about every single year We've been holding the we've been holding the costs uh, pretty steady. You may have to do a price increase based upon what's going on with inflation, and everything. But but that's a pretty that's a pretty cool number. And as I said, 143 families. That's all it takes. Given 841 pays for Habitat home. That's so awesome. uh, and it really is a no brainer. We've been in partnership with Grand Canyon University for years, and they did a payroll deduction from their faculty and staff of that tax credit paid out to us. And I last count, we had served like 650 families in repairs around the GCU campus. And we've done it in other neighborhoods too. But the tax credit model, any any organization, any company could adopt it, uh, direct that to Habitat, and we can help build and improve uh, affordable housing. And if you'll let me mention one example yeah, go for we, it. Just, we just helped a 91 year old korean war veteran disabled lived in a mobile home way out on bell road i mean i thought we were going to be in california bell road went out so far and he had had no heating or air conditioning for three years and Ooh. his he talked about his 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 home getting to 113 last summer and he thought his dog and his bird were going to die he lives by himself of course and we were able, he called on a Thursday, we were able to get him served that next week with a new unit, but it cost $6,000. He had, he didn't have that money. Right. And that's why 
you know, giving to Habitat, our veteran program, our, our aging in place program, Rosie Build. We just got a lot of ways to spend your money if you want to if you want to turn some of it over to Habitat. We'd appreciate it. Yeah, and I think that's what's so cool is I think everyone just thinks of Habitat in terms of building one house. But all these other sub programs that, that we have are just always, to me, just so amazing. I mean, talk about the restore stores a little bit. I, I have a client just this uh, yesterday that's donating a whole kitchen we're ripping out to the restore. I was just getting everyone connected. And uh, tell us where that where those cabinets are going to go, Jason. Yeah, if you, you know, uh, and Rosie has a business similar to this, I think. And Rosie's actually come and done radio shows at our restore. And we opened our new Tempe restore. They were at the store doing a live broadcast and they were bringing in, I don't know, 100 people that just were driving by, listening to him, pulled <laughs> in. Our restores are basically like Home Depot meets Goodwill. We sell a lot of gently, or, you know, we resell stuff for home improvement. It can be lights. Cap, the cabinets you're talking about, Mark, our deconstruction yep. business, we'll go into your home ahead of a remodel. We'll give you, we'll take it all out gently. So when Rosie comes in to install new cabinets and everything, it's already removed. We've yep. kept it out of the landfill. You get a donation receipt, the cabinets, whatever is sold in our store tax-free. Yep. And so a lot of times I'll go on a restore, there's better cabinets than I have in my own house sitting yep. there that have come out of Paradise Valley or Scottsdale or someplace. And it's because it, it's it, that's another, it's a top secret. I wish more and more people knew about it because I still walk by, even in my own neighborhood, which is a shame, the big green dumpsters just filled with perfectly good stuff. Yep. It's all going to landfill. It could have been sold in the store to people who really needed it. Totally agree. So yeah, with all the uh, detuscanization we're doing, Rosie, we're, uh, we're donating a lot of Tuscan items to your restore store. You, <laughs> you might have to have a whole Italian section in the store there pretty soon, Jason. <laughs> Okay. That's, that's so um, I know you got the thing with the vets. There's a lot of uh, that you've got going on with the construction training program. Talk about that a little bit. Right. Uh, and Rosie was there at the dedication of the construction training center. We, we basically had some people leave our office, our, our main, our whole office. We like to call it is I-17 at Glendale Avenue. And we took almost the whole building and turned it into a construction training center and uh, our students are there. Governor Hobbs came out for the dedication in December, early December. Couldn't believe that. First time we've ever had a governor from Arizona come to a habitat ceremony like that. But everybody, Rosie can talk about this, about the shortage of construction workers, but everybody loves workforce development. And you, you turn it into what habitat is doing. We're taking we're taking uh, former prisoner, you know, felons, re-entry people, nonviolent people that are coming back into society, need a job. We're taking homeless people. We're taking Native Americans, anybody 18 and older into this program to learn the construction trade. You learn in the classroom. You walk down the hallway. We've got a big laboratory where you can do electrical work and plumbing. You can even see a roof. And then you go out in the field and actually build a habitat home. That's next cool. to a family a lot of times. And we've had wonderful support from uh, Bob and Gail Book and the Milanovich Trust. Uh, Bob and Gail have sponsored like three homes for the for the trainees to build. So they're totally their homes during their entire construction time. They get to see everything from the slab up. And Rosie, why don't you talk about the need for these kinds of workers in the Valley? Well, it, it's, I don't know that it's ever been worse. The demand that we need. Um, and you know, Mark, we always used to call them tradespeople. Yep. But the way construction is gone, it's really a building science anymore. Right. We just don't build them the way we did in the 60s and 70s. There's a much more holistic approach that takes a lot of forethought. And you, you can enter the trades, become a specialist in a particular area. I mean, you can make a really good career choice and a quality of life that's a respectable at any level. So we're trying to encourage people, look, come in and start looking at it as a building science career. Because yeah. that's really what it is. So what I'm, I, this is one of my biggest pet peeves. It just drives me insane with what I see. Um, you know, I'm involved with a group called Elevate, Tom Lehman's group where he's bringing, you know, inner city kids, trying to get them, help them get to college and so forth. And I, you know, I've been, I've been, I'm kind of preaching to them, you know, college is one, one path, but I can show you another path 
That works yeah. just as well. And unfortunately, the schools don't teach cabinet making <laughs> and all these trade things that they used to teach. I learned drafting in high school. Yeah. I, I went to college for a couple of years, dropped out and got my got my license the old fashioned way working for George as a private professor, basically. But I had developed enough skill in high school to get a good job. I mean, look, look where I ended up, you know, Amen. and a no debt, no, no college degree. But you know, what was funny is four years after I was working for George, all my buddies that I was in college with all came out and they all had to work for me and that, and they were all in debt, you know, <laughs> they didn't go so well. So what I'd like to do is I'm going to, I'm going to talk to uh, the elevate people. I'd like to get some of these kids because what we do is we, we have a day at our office where they come in they, d- they design a house after we take them by a couple construction sites, a couple houses that are complete. It's always fun to walk them through a 20,000 square foot house and they look at me like, oh my God, people live like this, you know, <laughs> and um, and then bring it back. But I'd like to hook up with you, Rosie and and, and Jason, and, and figure out a way where we could get some of these kids that know darn well they're not going to go to college, but oh, maybe, yeah. they, maybe they get excited about some of the trades. And like you said, my stucco guy, owns seven restaurants. He's got 20 sports <laughs> cars. My stone and granite guy, I won't mention names, but he's got yeah. his own plane and a house in Greer. And I mean, these are good, long time paying jobs and none of yeah. these go into debt, you know, right out of the gate. So you can tell it, it this one drives me insane. So I want to figure out a way to get some more of these kids. And what, what I find is they, they, they're not aware of it. They're not even aware of these jobs. I mean, that, and they've like, what? There's people that do this? Wow, that's really cool, you know, because they're not telling that in school, you know. Well, we would we would welcome those uh, they come out to our habitat home under construction, sit in our construction training uh, program class for a, a session that that interests them, and then we have a poster on the wall, Rosie, and it has most every. Uh, you know, we're a pre-apprenticeship program. Most every one of the, the career fields you can go in with the current salaries right next to yeah, what that's you awesome. could make. And I'll tell you, uh, that's why we probably have a lot of our, our, our graduates going to the electrical trade because they see that electrician salary, journey to electrician. Yeah, and of course, yeah. you don't just come out of our program and start making that, but after, you know, your, your uh, take apprenticeship long. program. Yeah. It won't take, take long. That's for sure. Right, Rosie? Oh, it's incredible. And I tell you what, I have six children and I promised all my children, they're spread out over about 15 years. I would pay for their in-state college degree. <laughs> and I would just increase my cost of living for the first, the second, the third, the fourth. Well, the sixth came along and we couldn't even get her into community college. And the uh, where she wanted to go called me and they said, "We, what you don't understand, Mr. Romero, is that since your first daughter graduated college, the cost of education, has it gone up? Cost of living. It's gone up 600%. Yeah. Wow. It's ridiculous. It's, it's so, insane. We had I to was, readjust. I always get my interns that are, you know, are going to school to be an architect and they're on their summer break. And I, I tell them, you sure you really want to go back? Why don't you just start working <laughs> right now and kind of twist their arm a little bit, you know, but. I don't know. It to me, it's 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 not it's not working, and that's part of what's you know I think driving some of these costs up is is just college education in general. In my opinion, it's just crazy, you know. So anyway, that's a whole other podcast, I guess, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah it's solving it is another whole podcast. Yeah, exactly. Well, we, you know, we hear it all the time on our job sites from volunteers that come out on a Saturday and help build how fulfilled they are because they leave their desk and their phone in their home office or wherever, and they can actually come out and build something. And at the end of the day, see what they've done. And so when you're in these sciences, the construction sciences, I wish I had named my, my program after you Uh, should have heard that earlier, Rosie, be the construction science program, um, not the training program necessarily, but uh, they, they really, you know, you can end the day and know what you did. And, and, and what's cool is you can go down like, you know, Mark, it, like does, he goes, I built that, I built that, I built that. Yeah. Yep. And that there's, there's nothing that, that feels better than that. That's so. so true. So true. So you alluded to it a little bit earlier, Rosie, about uh, making your hollandaise sauce. And I know I've got another good chef right here with Jason Barlow. 
I've got a little challenge for the three of us. I think I think the three of us should figure out some way the three of us can go cook or make an auction item for Rosie, Jason Barlow, and Mark Candelaria to come cook dinner at your house. How's that? I love it. I, I'm game if you are, Rosie. I love it. Oh, count me in. Let's do it. I want to make Cajun because I, I want to sharpen my Cajun skills a little bit. I know how good you guys make your Cajun stuff. So I think it should be a Cajun dinner. Well, we can do that. I mean, we can do an etouffee. We can do a gumbo, a fricassee. We can do a deep wow. fried turkey, you know, whatever. I love it. Well, okay, I, Jason, I think you just got another auction item put together there. I'll put it down. And, and Rosie, Mark, and I, I was sous chef to Mark uh, last year. We auctioned off a dinner. He did his famous uh, paella in our, oh. in our beautiful patio. And he's got this pan like it's eight feet yeah. across. I mean, it's insane. And uh, what was that? Six of paella for six or ten, something like that. For eight. That was a eight. Well, that, that's that paella crazy. will do for that'll that one paella will do twenty. Wow. And uh, yeah. <laughs> So they've been auctioning. I've been auctioning them off for eight for eight thousand dollars for my small pan that only seats only feeds eight people. What a hoot! Yeah. So I think the three of us could could probably garner a pretty good uh, donation for a dinner from the three of us. So let's let's make that happen. Okay. You have a lot of fun doing it. Yep. So Rosie, what else you got going on? Show's going <laughs> great. Tell us tell us some of the things you have have happening. You know, Mark. Um, uh, when we worked together in my first company, which I sold to my employees back in 2002. I'm doing the same thing. Yeah. And uh, then I went into full-time broadcasting and consulting, teaching other construction owners how to pass their company down to their child, second generation, or key employees, yep. or outside buyers. And I kept doing the radio show. And then about 2016 or 2017, I answered a question on there. And then I got a phone call from my tile setter. He says, Rosie, we're not doing it like that anymore. So, so about 2016, 2017, I reopened a small remodeling company just to get back current in what's going on. And I found out that many of the people that were our mentors, you know, the uh, Gordy Rogers, the George yep. Christiansons, yep. you know, the Tony Suttons, the William Benners, the Pat Mass, they've all graduated. Yeah. 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 And so it's been fun to re-engage in the in this next generation of shakers and movers that are getting things done today. There will be the Gordy Rogers, the George Christiansons, you know, the Tony Sattons of tomorrow. So yeah, for sure. You know, I love seeing you at our AR our ARA meetings, Arizona Residential Arts. Yeah. So thanks for supporting that. Oh, but I love being a part of it, Mark. Yep. No, it's all good. So I think I'm going to let you guys wrap up and get out on the golf course and, and enjoy the rest of this beautiful day. Um, I thank you both so much. I just, like I said, you guys are both inspiring and all the things that you are doing. I, I just highly commend you for all that you do for our community and the people out there to educate, build, and just make Arizona a great place to live. So thank you. Thank you. Mark. Arizona is a great pleasure. place to live. Yep. And I look, is. I look forward to uh, making a touffee with you, Rosie. <laughs> All right. Now, uh, the one caveat, it, Mark, is it okay if I bring my mom? Oh, are you kidding me? <laughs> I love your mom. Okay. That's awesome. All right. She's awesome. I can, I'll, Mark, I'll I can Im Mark, I can imitate anybody's recipes and do okay. But mom, there, there is no recipe. There is nothing written down. Oh, I know. She's a, it I, just I, gets I, thrown together. You know, it's a, it's a, that's amazing. That would be, that'd be fun. We should put her as part of the group, part of the group. We'll just be all her okay. steps, right? I'll, I'll bring her. Mom will be a part of it. That'd be awesome. Okay. So one other thing I know you got going on kind of down deep in this big Canyon, Jason, tell me, tell me what that's all about. Oh, well, we're, we're privileged to be able to partner with the Havasupai tribe, the bottom of the Grand Canyon to help them uh, build two homes. They had a fire down there and we're building a five bedroom and a three bedroom home, Habitat for Humanity is. Uh, and we're partnering with Tucson and Flagstaff and some of the other Arizona affiliates. We're gonna be done a couple weeks. We've had a mobilization going on down there for four weeks now. We're sending 15 to 20 volunteers and some staff. And uh, the, the, the tribe is joining us helping to rebuild these homes. And I think the ceremony is March 15th. 
is when they're going to dedicate the homes, turn them over to the families down there. But it has been, it, it's the most remote Native American tribe in the lower 48. It's, you know, it's nine miles down on donkey or, or yeah. whatever, or a 15 minute helicopter ride. And we figured 55 flights with a helicopter to bring all the gear down to build oh, the homes. Wow. And they're just about done, as I said. It's really, you know, that's what that's why I pinch myself when I get up in the morning. I get a chance, I get to do kind of some of these cool things to help help people in need. Yeah, that's that's awesome. I that's I know a, that's a legacy down there. project. Yeah. yeah, for sure. Well, great job on that for sure. Okay, so everyone. Definitely uh, check out the links on uh, Blueprints and Blue Jeans. We want you all there. It's going to be a fun, fun night. And it's at Mono Lucia, walking distance for me. So I, I have an easy, easy walk home at the end of the night, Jason. And <laughs> it should be a lot of fun. So thank you so much, you guys. I sure appreciate it. Great job. Thank you. Thank you, Jason and Rosie. Great job. And a big thank you to both of you for all you do for so many in our community. I hope we see all of you at Blueprints and Blue Jeans Gala again on Saturday, March 23rd. All the info is right there in the story notes. Come and join us. It's going to be a lot of fun. So you heard Rosie talk about the best product he saw at the Vegas Home Builder Show, that being the countertop that charges your phone. Well, just yesterday, I randomly received an invite to come see this new product and meet the management team and folks. And let me tell you, this is one cool product made by a company right here in Phoenix called Free Power. I'm heading back over there next week to learn more, so stay tuned here, okay? It is, it is pretty amazing. Okay, we have some great podcast episodes coming to you in the weeks ahead, so stay tuned. Thanks for your continued listening. Thank you also for the ratings and reviews. Please give us a rating and review <clears throat> as it really helps promote our podcast. Let me know that you did, and I will send you a signed copy of my book, Mark Candelaria Holmes. We do our best to inspire living in everything we do from our podcast to our cooking classes, our book, our tours, our shows, and of course, our Candelaria Design homes. Okay, have a great week and let's all live our lives with love, compassion, grace, and positivity. I'm off to a four-day prayer workshop. Can't wait. So I'm going to be checked out here for the next four days. So I'll see you guys on the other side. Thanks for the listen and we look forward to connecting again real soon.